Se va la cuequita. At first glance, you may think what you're staring at is just a pile of useless old strings or possibly some sort of woven clothing accessory. But believe it or not, this is one of the most highly sophisticated and successful record-keeping devices which historical evidence has proven. This is the ancient kipu, which still exists today in certain areas. The place and time which gave way to the kipu was in the tail end of the late intermediate period and into the late horizon period, or approximately 1400 to 1532 common era. The actual beginning location of the kipu was from the Incan Empire, which stretched far and wide from Ecuador throughout central Chile. The heart of the Incan Empire was located in the place known as Cusco, a city high in the Andes of southern Peru. Archaeological evidence has shown that systems similar to the Kipu were in use in the Andean region from about 3000 BC. These played a key part in the administration of Tehuantinsuyu which was the empire of the four directions, controlled by the Incan ethnic group. As I mentioned earlier, this center of the Incan empire was the city of Cusco. This vast empire gave birth to a highly skilled and organized culture. Even though there was not a written language in use, they most certainly had clever ways of communicating their intent over the thousands of miles, which included a network of roads and messengers to speed up the communication processes. Tehuantinsuyu flourished across the Andes, but eventually the region was devoured under the invading Spanish Empire and the use of the kipu faded from most uses. Eventually it would be replaced by European writing systems. However, as I mentioned earlier, several villages are currently continuing the tradition and use of the kipu mostly for the local community, albeit for ritual rather than recording usage. The word kipu, meaning knot or to knot, comes from the Quechua language and refers to both singular and plural forms of the word. Quechua is still spoken today by millions in the Andes. Kipus are sometimes called talking knots in some instances for obvious reasons. Some colonial documents tell us that this device recorded an incredible amount of knowledge and was the Inca's language of commerce. Record keeping was one of the main priorities and purposes, and since it was portable and easily able to travel with, it was used to send messages along and back and forth throughout the empire. The kipu was the method by which the Inca consolidated their hold over the kingdom of the four directions. The statistics it relayed enabled the ruling class to know the exact economic conditions of all regions of their empire and act accordingly to prevent such catastrophes such as drought and famine or to send out a warning signal of possible approaching invaders. The kipu was also used as a mnemonic device by which the Incas recorded their laws and decided the fate of the conquered territories. The cords and threads contain numeric and other values encoded by knots in a base 10 positional system. Sometimes it might just have a few or up to 2,000 cords on one kipu. The cords are arranged so that there is one main cord which is called a primary cord. The primary cord is the one from which many pendant cords hang. There may also be additional cords attached to a pendant cord. Those have been termed subsidiaries. Some kipu can have up to 10, maybe 12 levels of subsidiaries. Kipu are more often displayed with the primary cord stretched horizontally. This allows the pendants to form a curtain of parallel cords or with the primary cord in a curve so that the pendants radiate out from their points of attachment. When kipu were in their prime and heavily in use, 
They were transported and stored with the primary cord rolled into a spiral. In the spiral configuration, kipu have been compared to an old-fashioned string mop. Now, considering the medium or base material of the kipu is a definite textile artifact. They were composed of cotton cords and occasionally camelid fiber. They have also been found with adornments, such as carved wooden animals, shells used as beads attached to the cords. They also consisted sometimes of spun dyed colorful or natural earth toned thread or strings from llama or alpaca hair. Today there are approximately 600 to 700 kipu surviving in museums and private collections around the world. Some archaeologists say the Incas may have used kipu as an alternative to a written language. Few of the world's lost languages have proved as daunting a task to decipher as the kipu. Many scholarly efforts have tried deciphering the vast and immense sorts of information. Researchers at Harvard have been using databases and mathematical models in recent efforts to understand the kipu. The enigmatic and still undeciphered record-keeping system of elaborately knotted strings used by the Incan Empire has long intrigued anthropologist Gary Urton. Since 2002, he and his colleague Kerry Brazine, a mathematician, have maintained the Kipu database project at Harvard University, which corrals all existing Kipu scholarship into one online repository. Most recently, they announced they may have found the meaning of a particular sequence of knots. Urton, in his interview with Archaeology Magazine back in 2005, states how the kipu were so perplexing and that they all come from an open or closed grave. We know that the dead were highly respected and they were probably visited by members of the community. Maybe the ancient record of the people themselves were kept with the dead. It's almost like being buried with your tax returns. The closest we can come to reading the kipu is through Spanish colonial documents. These colonial accounts inform us that kipu keepers, or the kipu kumayaks, were actually buried with the tools of their trade, as were weavers and potters. It may be no more complicated than that. The Spanish who chronicled this area in the New World repeatedly said the Inca knew quite a bit about astronomy, accounting, and mathematics, and it was all, every bit of it, recorded on kipu. And the Spanish could simply could not crack the code. The Spanish also knew the Inca state records were kept in the kipu, which were very systematically transcribed documents. For instance, when they were curious about population levels in a certain area, they would call in a kipu keeper, who would recite what was recorded, and then the Spanish would write that down. We have about 15 to 20 transcriptions of the kipu, but what we don't have is the key to the actual decipherment of the kipu, <clears throat> which would be a direct link between a specific transcription and one of the actual kipu. That would be, in a way, a Rosetta Stone, or Rosetta Kipu, rather. Kipu knowledge today are created, shared, demonstrated, used, and stored in many writing Technological forms, such as monographs and books. Other forms include websites, databases, images, exhibitions, live reenactments, television documentaries, tourism and festivals, as well as kinship ritual work processes. Gender and nationality, ethnicity and race. Indigenous politics all play roles in such systems entangled as current processes of globalization. The kipu is one life force or entity unto itself. So much information can be derived from just simple pieces of thread bound together almost like a patchwork quilt in a way. Humans' lives, past and present, ancestors of the ancient world all woven together in such charming yet quaint poetic object. In my opinion, I feel as though they are most certainly a beautiful form of art and hold regard to the past in their fibers, just like a painting or a photograph, 
can hold so much information in the medium of the actual object. Once gazed by the human eye, we really don't know the truth or meaningful information behind it. But that's what makes it so incredible. The mysteriousness that lures one in to always wonder. Cuequita.